Mr. Fickry, why don't you tell me something about your lifestyle? I'm 39 years old. I live alone. I subsist on a diet of frozen entrees. I'm not what you'd call an alcoholic, but I like to drink until I pass out at least once a week. And since my wife died, I hate my work. I'll start with exercise. Okay. I suppose Kunal Nair will always be identified as Ross from the Big Bang Theory, but here, in a very different kind of role, with Lucy Hale by his side. He plays the owner of a small bookstore who's lost his wife and life gets very complicated. The character's very complicated, and I wondered if Kunal got that from the beginning. Yeah, I think the character evolves over the course of the shooting for me. And then you always go back and say, oh, I now understand something and I wish I could go back and shoot some of that. But then when you watch the whole movie, it doesn't feel like that. You know what I mean? It kind of figures itself out as the story's done. But yeah, I think at least for me personally, it, it does take a week or so if you have that much time in the movie to really figure it out. Sometimes you don't even get it and then it just still works out. Yeah, I mean, you can only prepare so much, I guess. And then you just have to be like, well, screw it and just have faith that it's gonna work out. But uh, yeah, there are times when I'm like, I don't even think I got the character until we were wrapped. And yeah, like, yeah. go back and yeah, reshoot it because it. now I've got it figured out. I understand there, there couldn't be much improvisation. Of course, this was all based on a book and you want to honor the book, but could there be any? The script was really incredible because it was based on such a great book. And there was a musicality to the language because mm. if, you, if you watch the movie, some, sometimes it seems like people don't talk like that in real life, correct? Because mm. it, it feels like a play. Uh, with these monologues, especially Lucy has a beautiful, beautiful monologue in the hospital where she talks about what a hospital room feels like. With the language especially, I'm not sure we had that much room to play around with because it was so well written. The script was like poetry, so like why mess with perfection? So we just like honored the page. Was the final cut how you pictured the film when you first imagined the film? That's a good question. Yes, I mean, for me, yes, I think that um, absolutely. It sort of came out the way I envisioned it in my head. You know, like every mm -hmm. film, there's going to be certain shots. You're like, I wish they had used that take instead <laughs> of that take, you know. Yeah. But outside of that, at least for me personally, the look and the feel of the film is, is how I envisioned it. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me, because I wasn't there every day, seeing it all pieced together at the end of the day, it was like beyond my wildest dreams. Like there is like a very fairy tale whimsical yeah. feel to it and i think that that was really captured thank you both for willingness to go there i appreciate it enjoy it. Thank thanks you. thanks so much thank you flicks with patrick stoner explores the craft and culture of filmmaking that enhance our communities for television stations and websites around the country